Praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord hath made, and we are rejoicing, and we're happy about it. Amen. God is good to us, and we thank the Lord for you being here today and everyone joining us by live stream. My, hasn't it been a great week? Amen. But I may have missed one or two of you coming in. I want you to help me. Would you look over to the person on both sides of you and say, you look so much better than I do. Yeah, you look so much better than I do. <laughs> Amen. I want to say on behalf of my, me and my family, thank you for last week. It was absolutely wonderful. We had an outstanding time, and my, 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 you know how to do it. So I think you ought to just give yourself a pat on the back and, and just know that we appreciate everything. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord for the privilege to serve you at this time and what God is doing. And if this is your first time here, don't let it be your last time. But come back again and again and again. We have some announcements. Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock is our ladies' prayer time and Bible study. And my, how God has been blessing with that. And then Wednesday uh, at 7 p.m., you can tune in on our Murchie Church of God Georgia, and we'll come up with a virtual Bible study at 7 p.m. We do it right here, and I want to say, if you'd like to come by while we're doing that and just be here in the sanctuary, you're welcome to do that as well. I'd like for all of our seniors to say October the 26th on the count of three. One, two, three. October the 26th, which is not this Wednesday, but the following Wednesday, the last Wednesday of the month, we have our senior fellowship. It is absolutely going to be wonderful. Then Friday from 7 to 9 is freedom on the outside. I was able to go by this week, and I was telling JC, I said my phone kept going off. I was getting one text message after another. And so that's how it goes, though, and that's just part of pastoral work. But I want to say that I appreciate so much this this ministry that's led by Donnie and also Sister Margarita and also Sister Carolyn and Corey and the family. It is absolutely awesome what God is doing through this ministry. That's every Friday from 7 to 9, and they welcome you. They're also getting ready for the Christmas uh, for those that are on the streets that are in need of help. We're going to have a list for you starting next Sunday. Uh, we're go they're going to put together like a, a shoe box of goodies and uh, we're going to pass it out and you'll have an opportunity to be part of that before that Christmas rolls around. But Christmas is right here at us, is it not? We have a fall festival coming up and right before Amy comes to tell us about our fall festival, Brother Harold Jones will be with us the last Sunday of this month, and it is going to be wonderful. I talked with Harold uh, Thursday, and he said, Brother John, I'm looking forward to being with you. And I said, I know you are, but please bring your better half. He said, oh, Barbara, be right there with me. Barbara, be with me. So we're looking forward to a great time. Announce that. That's the October the 30th. And then several of you, that have recently given your heart to God and some who have rededicated their heart to the Lord. November the 13th is our baptismal Sunday. We're looking forward to being able to baptize those that, that have given their heart to God. Someone has asked me, said, do you baptize children? Most certainly. I remember my dad baptizing me with a 32 pistol in his pocket and we went out into the creek and, and he said, uh, he said, just hold on and trust me. He said, everybody line up, and everybody was lining up, and everybody was looking like this because we were in the river. What through, weren't those the days? Amen. Weren't, wasn't that the days? Oh, thank the Lord. But we have a nice baptistry. So if you've rededicated your heart to God or recently given your heart to the Lord, November the 13th is your baptismal time. Amy, thank the Lord for you and Sister Linda and so many others. Let's give them a hand of appreciation for what she's doing in, in our children's ministries. Come right on.
good morning and thank you. Hey, like your pastor, you've always said, it's a team. It's a team. It takes all of us. So just, but thank you for that. Um, I'm going to take just a minute. Um, wow, October is almost over, right? Um, so next Sunday is the 23rd. And like the pastor said, um, we're going to have a fall festival for the whole church, family, and friends on the 30th. But next Sunday, I would like for um, anybody that would be interested in volunteering uh, to help uh, either set up. Um, we're going to have games. We're going to have food. We're going to have a lot of things going on with all age range kids. So we want them all to be coming um, and I just would like to sit down with everybody. If you can bring a covered dish, we can eat real quick um, and just talk about how we're going to plan everything out. So that's next Sunday, just immediately after church, just have a luncheon for the volunteers that would like to help. And then the following Saturday, which is the 29th, um, will be our family fall festival. So um, just invite all your friends, um, all the kids to come, and um, it's going to be a fun time for all the kids. Uh, the main thing is we're going to put Jesus in the center of it, um, and we're going to teach these kids how to be the light for Jesus. Amen. Um, so um, just thank you all. I've, I noticed, too, there are sign-up sheets for the luncheon also, I'm sorry, um, that if you plan to come, if you would just sign up uh, so we can know how many are going to come. And then thank you for, we have some people that have signed up for things that we're going to need for Saturday. And thank you for the ones that have signed up and if anybody else wants to. Um, but thank you and God bless you all. Have a good Sunday. Amen. Once again, let's let her know how much we love and appreciate her faithfulness. And I tell you, she works hard. Amen. But we're here to worship the King of glory, the great I am, the Lion of Judah, our Passover Lamb, our risen Savior, who today is seated at the Father's right hand, who declares, come unto me, all ye that are burdened or heavy laden, and I will give thee rest. So if you're heavy laden today, just give it to God as we stand together, if you're able, and let's worship the Lord today. Amen. Praise God. Come on, put your hands together this morning and let's praise the Lord. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan to get me behind. Victory today is mine. Victory. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan to get me behind. Victory today is mine. Salvation is mine. Salvation is mine. Salvation today is mine. I told Satan to get me behind. Salvation today is mine. Salvation, salvation is mine. Salvation is mine. Salvation today is mine. I told Satan to get me behind. Salvation today is mine. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is mine. The Holy Ghost is mine. The Holy Ghost today is mine. I told Satan to get me behind. The Holy Ghost today is mine. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is mine. The Holy Ghost is mine. The Holy Ghost today is mine. I told Satan to get me behind. Today is mine. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me and
In the trial of my life, all I could do was sigh. Then suddenly God breathed in me a second way to try. Oh, I live to tell about it. I live to testify. I live to tell about it. Let God be glorified. Satan's plans to destroy me backfired like dynamite. Gave me a testimony. I shall live and not die. For a moment things looked hopeless. Thought I would not survive. But I live to tell about it. I live to testify. Satan did not do his homework when he chose me to harass. You see, I was a born again just yesterday. I've been tested in the past. I know just how you work, how all you do is lie. I will not be deceived. I know the way, the truth, the lie. Oh, I live to tell about it. I live to testify. I live to tell about it. Let God be glorified. Satan's plans to destroy me. Backfired like dynamite. Gave me a testimony. I shall live and not die. For a moment things looked hopeless. Thought I would not survive. But I live to tell about it. I live to testify. I live to tell about it. I live to testify. I live to tell about it. Let God be glorified. Say that's plan is to destroy me. That fire like dynamite gave me a testimony. I shall live and not die. For a moment things looked hopeless. Thought I would not survive. But I live to tell about it. I live to tell about it. I live to testify. I live to tell about it. Let God be glorified. Satan's plans to destroy me. Backfired like dynamite. Gave me a testimony. I shall live and not die. For a moment things looked hopeless. Thought I would not survive. But I live to tell about it. I live to tell about it. I live to tell about it. I live to testify. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Isn't that why we're here? To tell about it. To give others the same chance that we had. Go tell someone, Jesus said, go out into the world in the highways and the byways and compel them to come in. You were compelled by the Holy Spirit. And we pray for others this morning to let God have their, his way in their life, to give up and let Jesus.
Jesus, cause I know right now. 
Amen. Give him a real praise offering. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. My Father God, we cast all of our cares this day upon you. My Father, you know that brother, that sister that's under a load. Lord, you have spoke to us through every song that it's all about you as we relinquish the burden, as we release the burden, and we give it to you, dear Lord. We're thankful to you, Lord, that, that, that the devil tried to bring against us, it backfired upon him because of the goodness and the graces of God Almighty. My Father, this day I pray for the unction of the Spirit of God to permeate this place, to touch this grounds upon which we stand today in the name of the Lord. And we give you the praise and the honor and the glory in Jesus' name. God bless the children's ministry. Overshadow them and touch them this day in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. My Lord, look over to your neighbor and tell them, give up in Jesus' name. Give up in Jesus' name. Give up. Give up. And let Jesus, oh, let Jesus take hold. Give up. Give up. Give up. And let Jesus, let Jesus take hold. Give up. Come on, give up. Give up. And let, let Jesus, let Jesus, let Jesus take hold. At the mere mention of your name, the devil and the imps of hell have to flee. At the mere mention of your name, the fevered brow is broken. At the mere mention of your name, you heal sciatic nerves, you heal back problems, you heal cancer. You heal sugar diabetes. My Lord, I pray this morning that you would reach down in Ocala, Florida and touch my fellow minister, Brother John Childers, in the name of the Lord. Father, you said that there's never no more put upon us than what we're able to bear. And I pray, Lord, that you would touch him and bring forth a healing. Yes, because, Jesus. devil, it's going to ricochet. Yes. It's going to backfire in the name of the Lord. Touch him in his physical body this day. God, every listener that's watching by live stream, may they feel the same Holy Ghost anointing that we feel in this house today in Jesus name amen and amen and amen give the Lord a great big praise offering amen you may be seated if you like hallelujah God's good to us all the time and all the time God is good God is good I believe we can do better God is good all the time and all the time God is good God is good hmm I believe, and I know in the deep of my heart, that I have a word for you today. It's not just for one or two, but I believe it's for every child of God, every friend who has yet to give their heart to the Lord. Beloved, Jesus is coming. And we don't have time to put it in reverse. Matter of fact, do you realize that God don't have reverse? He goes forward. He moves forward. And may we move forward in Christ Jesus. Turn with me, if you will, to 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. We're going to begin reading at verse 5. If you're there, say amen. Just a little hint. It's in the New Testament. <laughs> if you don't have it, just lift up your eyes to the screens. You are all children of light and of the day. 
let this sink in, beloved. Hear me. There is a spiritual war going on trying to cause the children of God to be intimidated, trying to put you in a mold that you don't fit because we're children of the Most High God. Anybody found yourself in the last 10 days in an uncomfortable setting or situation, would you raise your hand? This is why. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do. But let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and of love and as a helmet of hope of salvation. Look at verse 9. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, God touch us today. We are literally living in an hour in the spirit realm where the enemy is trying to lullaby us to sleep, to rock us to sleep. And it has been my honor for the last many years to preach this gospel and to teach God's holy word. And I'm so thankful for the live stream. Can we hear an amen for that where we can reach out in the name of the Lord? Though these doors, as long as I serve as lead pastor, will never be shut again, regardless what raises this ugly head out of the pits of hell, I'm thankful for the live stream in Jesus' name. Amen. But I've attempted to find the mind of God in every message and in every lesson that we have proclaimed. And in the last several months, there has been a main objective and that objective is trying and attempting to move the believers forward in Christ. Look over to your neighbor and say, it's time to move forward with my walk with God. It's time to move forward with my walk with God. You see, messages such as the importance of prayer and the importance of the Word in the life of a believer. This we've been studying on Wednesday night along with spiritual success bringing to you a series of messages on Sunday morning, Christ building his church, Satan's attack, Moses is dead, all to get us to see the objective that the Lord is trying to get into our spirit, and that is to move forward in the power and in the might of the blessed spirit of God. Now, you might want to write this down. You might want to jot down a few other things this morning. The very DNA of God is forward only. There is no reverse in God's plan. Never one time in the Word of God have I found where God is going backward or retreating. The Christian's life is a walk. And it too at times is an all out and out run. But never forget you're fighting for your spiritual destiny. Not for a spiritual destiny per se to have more and more is okay. Not for a spiritual destiny to say that you're moving to another location and moving is okay. But for the spiritual destiny that the enemy is trying to hinder and lullaby you to sleep is to stop the destiny of you making heaven your home. That's our final destination. Every one of you this morning is beautiful. Every one of you are handsome. Every one of you look great. I asked one of the children as he was coming in, I said, would you help this 80-year-old, 80 84-year-old man in? You remember the videos last week? I was 84, and then I was 82. And one bright one said I was 41. How about that? Missing it all around. But thank 
the Lord, beloved. We're here today, but just as sure as each one of us is sitting here, we have an appointment to die. And after that, the judgment. You say, well, Brother Moats, why get so morbid? I'm not morbid at all. I'm trying to get us to move forward in the name of the Lord and understand the trepidation, the bumps in the road, the gullies along the way, the deep ditches along the way, the pitfalls along the way is identified as spiritual warfare and spiritual warfare is real. And there are times we get tired. Am I right or wrong? There's times we say, oh my, Lord, I just keep faltering. I just keep floundering. I just keep failing. Why should I try to get up? But oh, beloved, get up in the name of the Lord. Get up in the name of the Lord and say, this is the day the Lord hath made. And I will rejoice and be glad. Get up in the name of the Lord and declare, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Get up in the name of the Lord. But pastor, I've disappointed myself. I've disappointed my children. I've disappointed my spouse haven't we all at one time or another but thanks be to God we're like the demoniac of Gadara we sit here this morning clothed and in our right mind because Jesus came into the garden of despair Jesus came into the garden where there was no hope and he presented hope Jesus came into the garden of the demoniac of Gadara where there was no way and presented a way and because of Jesus coming we can say no weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper. Now our text declares we're children of light. Our text is, declares that we are to watch and be sober and not fall asleep. Notice my rendering and not fall asleep. We are to put on faith if you're going to have anything, beloved, you better have faith in this day and time. We got to put on love. And then he said, a helmet of hope. Realizing our salvation is in Christ Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Look over to your neighbor and say, keep moving forward in Jesus' name. You see... God, help me with this message in the name of the Lord. The, the enemy didn't want you to have this. And I told the enemy, I said, I've never listened to you through the years. And I'm not going to start on this Sunday in the name of the Lord. You see, beloved, we've got to hear the words of our text once again, looking at verse 8. But let us who are of the day be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love and as a helmet, a hope of salvation. It's time to move and to move forward. It's time, as our dear brother and my son in the faith preached last week, we've got to stretch. And we've got to stretch like we've never stretched before. But, Pastor, I'm getting tired stretching. That's okay, honey. You've got a brother saying and a sister saying to you, you can make it in the name of Jesus. You've got a family right here at the Armerchy Church of God saying, you can make it in the name of Jesus. you got a pastor looking at you at this morning saying, I believe in you, but even more than believing in you, I believe in the God in you in the name of the Lord. You can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth you. My Lord, one, tra one tactic that the enemy has that he uses against the church, the believers. How many believers are here this morning? Would you shout amen? amen. <laughs> Did you hear that, devil? Oh, hallelujah. Is to wear us out, to get us busy. Well, I'm too busy to pray. Honey, we're living in such hour, we better pray. Amen. It's like insurance, Brother Sam. We can't hardly afford the premium, but you better not be without it. Amen. And you already better have something made up. It's called prearrangements. And I'm not talking about the physical death. I'm talking about 
where your body goes back to the dust from which it came and your spirit goes home to be with the Lord. You can make that plain. You can make that and settle it once and for all right now in Jesus' name. Knowing this, not saying that we're lazy and not saying that we are not warriors, but there are times that we grow tired and we grow weary and understanding today the enemy is trying to push you back. And I love all the songs that they sang. But the one that really rendered in my spirit today was when he tried so hard, it backfired upon him. Oh, how many of us have seen it backfire? My Lord and my God, when God declares no weapon shall be able to prosper, he declares no weapon shall be able to prosper. Weeping may endure for the night. Honey, you may weep all night long, but joy is coming in the morning. In the name of Jesus. My Lord and my God, more, greater, forward, higher, deeper, passion, drive, reaching, stretching, stretching. Look over to your neighbor and say, stretch one more stretch. Pressing, hungering, thirsting after God. These are the words that express the very attitude of our Heavenly Father when it comes to the Christian's life. Did you hear them? Move, greater, forward, higher, deeper, passion, drive, reaching, stretching, pressing. I believe the sentiment and the spiritual DNA of the Christian's life could be expressed and observed very well as we look closely at Exodus 14 and 15. And the Lord said to Moses, Wherefore or why are you crying unto me? Just speak to the children of Israel that they get up and move, go, stretch, forward. <laughs> Do you see it? He told me, he said, you've got to get up and you've got to move forward in the name of the Lord. Hear me today, church. The Spirit of the Lord is saying to us, we've got to affirm each other. I cannot make it all by myself. The Scripture said two are better than one, for greater is their reward in heaven. The Scripture said, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together in the manner of which some is. The Scripture says that the Lamb of God takes away the sins of the world. It's not just about one person it's not just about one man or one woman but beloved we are like a mighty army moving forward in the name of the Lord you are never alone in Jesus name you may be in a home all by yourself you may eat turkey dinner on Thanksgiving day all by yourself but God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Spirit is right there with you oh give him a praise offering in the name of the Lord my Lord. Mm. I was drinking coffee at a restaurant not too awfully long ago. A group of ministers came in and said, Pastor Moats, you sitting all by yourself? And I said, where? And they looked at me like, don't you realize? And I said, no, you don't realize. For here sits the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And they looked at me. Why is it so hard for us to live by faith? Amen. We believe in the wind, but you don't see it. Amen. We believe in it, though, don't we? Because we see the results of the wind. When I look out across this congregation and I look into that camera, I see and hear the results of a mighty God. Oh, hallelujah, that sent his only begotten son to a world that could not save itself, to a world who could not help itself, to a world who could not justify itself, to a world who could not baptize itself in the spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit. But oh, thank God today because Jesus came and became the first fruits. Oh, 
hallelujah, let me tell you, there's brothers and sisters sitting here today and sitting all over planet Earth, and that God is saying to us, it's time for us, regardless how we feel, but kick it in power, kick it in the Holy Ghost, and allow the four-wheel drive of God to get you through and get you through your destiny in the name of Jesus, my Lord and my God. Oh, hallelujah. Isn't it interesting? When referring to going to sleep, you never hear phrases like, I leaped into sleep last night. <laughs> you never hear, I jumped off into sleep. Instead, we hear phrases like, I fell asleep. She fell asleep. They fell asleep. Noting that sleep overcomes you gradually. Go with me to Romans, the 13th chapter. And let's begin reading around verse 11. Knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the work of darkness. Mm. Then Hebrews 12 and 1 said, Let us lay aside every weight and the sin. Now watch this. Which does so easily beset us. I put that in in parentheses. And let us put on the armor of light. You get it? Say amen. amen. Look at verse 13. Let us walk properly means soberly. Don't become intoxicated of the things of this world. As in the day, now notice, let us walk properly or soberly. As in the day. What day? The day presently. The day that is ushering in the coming of the Lord. Hmm. I hear you, Holy Spirit. How many of you are looking forward to voting in just a few days? Would you raise your hand? I believe everybody in the house ought to be at the polls. I say that. And I believe you ought to be voting biblically in the name of Jesus. So many people have told me, I can't wait to get to the polls. And I ask them, but have you prayed? People say, I can't wait to do this, and I can't wait to do that. I want to see a difference. I want to see a change. Beloved, a difference and a change comes when the church of Almighty God falls prostrate before God and begins to pray. Does not the Word of God say, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray? But too many in the body of Christ are like the peacocks. They have nothing to offer but their tail, and they're just trying trying to show it around like they are the big stuff. Let me tell you, beloved, Paul said our reasonable, is to, our reasonable service is to present ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Oh, the Lord wants our talent. God wants more than just our talent, but he wants our availability. He wants more than our availability. He wants our mind. He wants more than our mind, but we are the temple of the Holy Holy Spirit of God. And when this temple lays down, my Lord and my God, we're gone home to be with the Lord. But until then, we've got to do what God declares for us to do. And that is move forward. My Lord. My Lord. The night is far spent. Verse 12. The day is at hand. Please get this. Let us, who is us? That's you and I. Cast off the work of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Amen. Mm. Verse 13, let us walk properly and soberly as in the day, not in revelry. 
Noisy festivities, just making a noise, being as a sounding brass, drunk on the things of the world. Now, please understand, when he's talking about this, he's not talking necessarily about being physically drunk. But there are people so drunk in the things of the world with their ambitions and their aspirations that have never been brought under subjection to the Spirit of God. Are you with me? My Lord. Drunkenness, not in lewdness or wickedness, not in lust or degrading passions, not in strife and envying. But now notice verse 14. But put on, <laughs> Woo! put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provisions for the flesh to fulfill its what? Degrading passions, its lust. Oh, amen. But Brother Motes, if I do this, I'll have that. And once I get that, I'll be able to do this. But beloved, are you leaving the Lord behind? Or is God divinely orchestrating your path? Has the anointing of God blessed it? Has the Spirit of God smiled upon it? Amen. Has it come from God? The Lord said, I will not withhold any good thing from those that walk upright before me. Honey, if you need a spouse, God's got one for you. If you need a house, God's got one for you. If you need an automobile, God's got one for you. But most of all, he, got, he has salvation for the saving of your soul and you may move forward in the name of the Lord. My Lord, give him a praise offering. Oh, I remember a number of years ago pastoring here on the district. Sister Gwen and Brother Melvin walked into the church that night. She was scheduled for, I believe it was rotator cuff surgery or something of that nature. They were getting ready to leave and church was already over. See, we think unless it's in the lights or unless it's big or unless it's this or unless it's whatever. It's not of God. Let me tell you, God moves quietly also. In the dark of the midnight have I altered my face while the storm clouds above me there was no hiding place in the crash of the thunder precious Lord hear my cry keep me safe Till the storm passes by, till the storm passes over, till the thunder it sounds no more, till the clouds roll forever from the sky. Hold me fast and let me stay. In the hollow of thy head, Lord, keep me safe till the storm passes by. If you get it, say amen. I said if you really get it, say amen. My Lord, you can be in a shout and be all by yourself. You can have the most in the bank and still feel all alone. You can have the finest home in the neighborhood and feel as though everybody's forgotten. Your cupboards could be full, your cabinets filled, and you can feel, dear Lord, where have I gone wrong? God has brought this message to you today to tell somebody just move forward in my victory move forward in my faith move forward in my love move forward in my hope understanding that salvation is in the Lord Jesus Christ and in the dark of your midnight just still away with God until God moves in my Lord and my God hear the word it's time to move and to move forward. It's time to stretch and stretch upward. And it's time to grow and grow in God and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is why the enemy, <laughs> the 
This is why the enemy tries to get you looking hither and yon. Mm. I hear you, Father. Mm. God has his hand on you. God has his hand on you. Hear me. Look over to your neighbor and say, God, God has his hands on me and you. Amen. God has his hands on you and I. <laughs> God has his hands on us, and the devil can't stand it. My Lord, I got the words to that song up here, and how did it say? He said that, that the enemy, it backfires. Is that what it was? It what? It backfires like dynamite. But God, I thought this is what you wanted. No, nope, God just says, I got something better for you here. My Lord, I, I got all kind of things going through my mind, trying my best to follow the leading of the Lord. God has already dealt with some of you. God has already spoke to some of you and said this, in your patience, possess your blessings. Just wait upon me. Just wait upon me. Just wait upon me. Oh, in your uncomfortableness, just wait upon me. I'm positioning you. You had to feel this in order to get here. My Lord, in your attack, in your attack that you felt like all hell has come against you. Your roots in me have grown deeper. Your trust in me has grown deeper. Your faith in me has grown deeper. And in your lack right here, you said, dear Lord, I'm doing everything that I can. God says, I reward faithfulness. Ah, Lord and my God. God has his hands upon you. And God is going to bless you if you will wait upon him. My Lord, when I was young, you know there's something to be said, and I'm not trying to offend any listener or any young person here today. But there's something to be said about young and dumb. Will you receive that? We think as though, Lord, uh, you're going to come before I get married. I asked one that. After the Lord didn't come and they got married, and Rose replied to me, I wished he had come. <laughs> Wanted Oris so well. <laughs> Colleagues of ours that pastor in North Carolina. <laughs> she said, John, pray that, that the Lord would just hold off till I. <laughs> we think, dear Lord, I, I want this and I want that. Lord, this is going to happen before I can. No, let me tell you something, beloved. I have learned this in my life. The greatest things that God has for you. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord. Teach me, Lord, to wait. There's been many times that had I not waited upon God, I'd have missed him. I have seen God divinely orchestrate my life. It doesn't mean that there haven't been times that I haven't grown tired and weary. We may not have, and when I say we, I mean in the body of Christ, everything that this world has, but that's okay. Because I'm going to a place that Paul said, compared to what's waiting on me, this nothing more than cow dung here. Now that's something. Amen? Well, when you see this big old tall six foot three preacher, <laughs> sister, I can think, I, I think about my mother in law. My mother-in-law never had a whole lot of things of this world. But I could see her happy self. She's always happy. Love, 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 love the holidays. She loved the festivities of it all. She loved big 
Christmas tree. She loved big ribbons. When she got to heaven, I believe she, she, she just said, wow. <laughs> and I believe she looked over there and, and mother said, well, Dallas, good to see you. Come on over. Me and Ernie sitting over here. <laughs> You say, Brother Moats, what are you saying? The best that I can comprehend. But our little old pinochle brain can't comprehend what heaven's like. Because eye has not seen, and ear has not heard, and neither has it entered into the hearts of all that God has in store. Now you thought this old guy had forgotten about Sister Step that night. They were beginning to leave, not knowing, but God did. Not knowing, but God did. She was sitting back. Jeanette, just a little bit in front of where you're at this morning. I went over and I said, it's so good to have y'all with us. Earlene, you and David were with them that night. I said, it's so good to, it's so good to see you. And I walked away and the Spirit of God said, lay hands on her and pray. You know, I, some people get, oh, well, what's your need? Honey, it don't matter if I know the need or not. Lay hands and pray. God's already taken care of it. I walked over to her, and I said, Sister, I just feel like I need to pray for you. And I, I, I just reached over, and I said, In the name of the Lord, whatever it is, God, you're the healer of our body. You're the keeper of our soul. You're the preserver until you call us home. And she just prayed for her. She went out. They, they were getting in the van. And, and if I understood the story right, she said, she, she got in and he looked over and said, do you realize what you just did? She said, you reached up and got in the van. She said, I'm healed. And God began, to, and she called me the next day. She said, Brother Moats, God healed me last night. She said, God touched me. She said, God ministered to me. She said, God kept me. And when I had the privilege here just a few months ago to celebrate her home, I stood before that beautiful family, and I wept with them, and I cried with them, and I drank coffee with them, and I ate with them. But, honey, we celebrated her home because no weapon throughout her Christian walk with God was able to prosper. And on her deathbed, the Holy Ghost was moving and blessing her and took her home to be with the Lord. I said all of that to say this. We're going home. If the Lord tarries and we see the coming of the Lord, beloved, we're going to be gone in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. But Brother Moats, what about my clothes? What about my little pet? What about my automobile? What about the traffic on 285? What about the traffic on Highway 27? Honey, I don't care what happens. I'm gone and I'm out of here. But until then, I've got to move forward until then I've got to stretch until then I've got to keep going in the name of Jesus oh give him a praise offering right now oh going home I'm going home there is nothing would you stand to hold Lord, well, I caught a glimpse of that heavenly land. Praise God, I'm going home. I hear you, Holy Spirit. Listen, you've got to make up your mind right now. Don't, don't exit. Don't exit. Don't exit. God wants you to go to a higher height. God wants you to go deeper. God wants you to stretch. God wants you to move forward. And just as a symbol of that, would you just lift your hands and say, Father, here am I. Amen. Just let the Holy Spirit touch you right now. Let the Holy Ghost touch you. Let the Spirit of God bless you right now. My Lord and my God, you feel the presence of God. You feel the very presence and the essence of the Lord. My Lord, you're getting ready to go home. Hey, surrender it all to Him. Surrender it all to Him. Oh. Spirit of God. 
Holy Ghost touch you. My Lord, let them just worship him. Just worship him. you just lift one of your hands to God I want you to pray with me right now please even those by live stream would you just lift your spirit to God right now lift your hands to the Lord with me father God would you pray with me father God in the name of Jesus I'm yours and I just sang and I declared to the devil I am not his I am not his I'm going home I'm going home but until then I'm moving forward until then I'm moving forward my Lord now would you begin to pray one for another right now just find somebody to pray with find somebody to pray with in the name of Jesus find somebody to pray with Father, I speak in the name of Jesus, healing to that brother, that sister that is suffering in their bodies. In the name of the Lord, Father, we're believing what the Word declares, that by your stripes we are healed in the name of Jesus. God, in the name of the Lord, reach down in Redmond. Touch my fellow pastor member. Lord, touch him. Touch Tim Landman right now. I ask you to bring forth healing of the infection around his heart. Lord, I ask you this morning to reach your hands down upon so many, many others that need a healing in their body. God, we're believing you, Lord. We're believing you, Lord, as we declare to move forward in Jesus' name. And the people of God shouted amen. Our ushers are going to the door now to give you an opportunity to worship the Lord in your tithing and in your offering. Nowhere in the scripture does God bless tippers, but he blesses tithers. And as you tithe unto the Lord and you give unto God, God said, I'll press it together. I'll press it down. He said, I'll shake it together. And he said, the blessings will do what? Just overflow. How many of you need an overflow blessing? Gas higher. Foods higher. Amen. Donna told me the other day, she said, Groceries cost us $100 this week. And I thought to myself, well, that's about two and a half bags, three bags. You know how it is. But as we give unto God, God will bless. My Lord and my God, we thank you for the word. We thank you for every friend and visitor who chose to join us physically and also by live stream. 
We pronounce blessings upon this household of faith in Jesus' name. We give you the praise for what you've done. And we declare, look what the Lord has done in the name of the Lord. May you go and go in the peace and in the power of the Spirit of the living God. God bless you is my prayer. Oh, look what the Lord